Welcome back to part two of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way, featuring our special guests. Now let's dive right back into the conversation and continue exploring their incredible journey. Say that again, sorry. So I was going to start saying, you're just rubbing it in now with the sunrise because we just don't no, get yeah, sorry. <laughs> I have lots That's of your own fault, not mine. No. <laughs> you choose your path. Um, yeah, no. You choose your path. Yeah, yeah. And you have got back into your photography over there, is that right? Um, yeah, so when I got here, um, I mean, I looked into all of this before coming over. And, um, yeah, it has been like starting again. Uh, so I, yeah, I found that, I don't know if it's the area that I'm living in, where it's very hard to sort of get into the market and, um, and um, you know, sort of, you have to I have to start really low again as if I'm starting out again you know like I'm not a mm. reputable photographer seen here so um I was 10 years in business in Australia and most people especially commercial and companies that knew me knew I was worth you know the money and and whatnot and it was not a case of sort of begging for business really whereas here it's literally was starting again so um which is fine um so I was really sort of putting myself out there and I remember we when we got this flat um that we were moving into I suddenly panicked that I wasn't really busy with the photography and um so I put myself out there which is what you have to do you have to really put yourself out there you can't just sit at home and expect you know people to come through your door and ask for your work and um, so I put a little Absolutely. post up in the local pages. I joined all the local community pages as I was a member of back in, in Adelaide. And because um, I do think it's all about community. I do think that's where we lack a lot of now in the world is, you know, mm. community within our own surroundings and um, helping. Connection and relationships. Yeah, exactly. And um, so, yeah, I put myself out there saying I'm moving to the village. I'd love to help out anywhere with the, with my photography. This is what I do, you know. So immediately I got so many lovely messages and invites for cups of tea and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, and then, mm. and then I said I teach photography as well because that's the thing nowadays. Everyone's a photographer. They've all got a phone. They can take amazing photos. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's mm. like, well, let's tap into that area. So I've done a few workshop uh, photography workshop smartphone photography workshops so i've done that here in the flat which which has been amazing um yeah you're just looking for what's needed really out there and and um but then i thought this is i felt like it wasn't I, i'll always love photography always love it um but it wasn't fulfilling me completely and i'm always thinking what do i want to be when i grow up <laughs> i'm always thinking what do, is this what i want to do is this what you know yeah, so I'll always do my photography. Only two days ago, I just shot a baby. So I captured a baby and a doggy, his little, little um, sister doggy. And that was amazing. So I'll always do that. I'll always, you know, and uh, but I've managed to now get myself a job um, with my dad. Um, and it's it still incorporates a bit of photography because he actually has his own printing firm. And um and he had a lot of um, jobs for me, a lot of projects for me. One was setting up a website for something in particular. I can't really say it's a bit of a secret project that he has going on. It's very exciting. Um, but then an another thing was like, actually, you'd be really good at this. And he actually puts prints up in mental health institutions all around the country. Um, so prints like, oh, I should have got examples. I don't know where they are now where I've put them, but um, but such as forests with sunsets and, and um, you know, beaches and jetties and all the views that you would see around Australia <laughs> on prints. Yeah. And for mindfulness, you know, when you go into um, when you go into these mental health institutions and hospitals, care homes, all this sort of um, genre, um, putting up, um, you know, wallpapers. Um, so the staff and the, the um, I forgot what we call them now, the patients, it's not the patients, the service users, we call them, um, yeah. that they get to see these beautiful pictures. And even just recently, I'm always listening to podcasts, they say even just looking at a fake plant, I need my plants, these are real, by mm -hmm. the way, even just looking at a fake <laughs> plant can, can help your mindset, you know, can help your mental health. Yeah. Um, so even with them to look at, you know, a, a fake sunset or sunrise or, you know, an image of it just improves their uh, mental health. So um, it's amazing, really, how I've jumped from 
I love doing my photography and everything in in Australia. I have been doing it ten years, and um, and it can be a little bit strenuous on the body. I was getting sort of achy shoulders, heavy cameras, and you know things, and it is mm. hard work. But um, but now this is a whole other niche that I've gone into. Niche is that right? A whole other thing I've gone into. Adventure, <laughs> another adventure, and um, yeah, and it's in the mental health um, area, which I'm really really passionate about, and um, I am now going around hospitals I'm now going to be doing it on my own and just um talking about what images can go where and I can actually give my own images as well um which I have done a few of landscape images and um and if they get used I get paid for that as well so um to go up in these hospitals and um yeah so we've been to the Priory been to lots of hospitals in Birmingham I've been at York I've been Stoke on Trent just in one week I've been to five uh, different areas of the country all up and down the country and i love it so I the priory it. It, it is in manchester isn't it no there is the priory in manchester and we do go there as well but this one was actually in york oh. and it's not the it's not like the private priory it is um this one is a bit different it has got the beautiful building that looks very posh that's where the staff are but then they are, there is a section there which is there's people there that are one away from going to prison um, that are no. um, struggling with mental health and have maybe done some things that um, they're not quite ready to go to prison, but they're in um, they're in this other environment which is better suited for them. Um, yeah. So there was a real adrenaline going in there. We got searched and we couldn't take in things with us, you know, uh, pens or, you know, phones or anything in with us. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit worrying. But then also it was a... Um, I don't know. I just felt like it was. I felt excited. <laughs> that's really, you're not excited. That's but well, also I don't know. It's um, yeah. It's an environment that I never thought I would be entering. But it's. But I've always said I've always been passionate about this. This could happen to any of us. Not that I'm saying we'd commit crimes or anything. But mental health hmm. and um, you know, um, what's the word? Um, it can be affected in many ways, let's say, and um, we can easily say, oh, God, you know, this is scary area, but I think these people just need help. You know, they just need help and support and, um, you know, the right help. And, and I love being around staff, you know, who are so compassionate and, um, yeah, just beautiful people that, you know, I was talking with that are there helping these people. And, um, you know, it's nice to be a part of that and to be able to help in, in a way through art. <laughs> well, you're putting. Uh, I think that's maybe your purpose, really. Is your call and the, or your calling. You're putting your two passions together. Something that is close to your heart, and um, your, your photography as well. And 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 prior to, prior to the conversation before we started, I did show you some pictures. Now we're on the subject of your father and uh, photography, which I didn't know about you, Dad. Uh, for those who can't see, I'm going to show some pictures up of Sarah's photography out in the country. Well. It's, it's your show. You tell us where yeah, this photography lovely. is and where it was taken. Yeah, so I actually took that picture back in 2014. Um, so that's me laying on the beach. And I, the, what I love about these pictures, right, is that it looks dead peaceful and it looks so easy. And this is what I always say to my families. No one sees the journey to the success. No one sees, mm. and I learned this years ago, like J.K. Rowling didn't just throw a load of letters into a book and then suddenly Harry Potter was born. Um, you know, no one sees the journey, the the the, the trials that they go through to um, to come out with an amazing product. And uh, I don't know why I'm going this, mm. but, but basically what I love about that picture is that it just looks so peaceful and easy, yet I remember the the hilariousness of taking that picture. It's like four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning on a beach called Black Point in... Um, in uh, near Adelaide in Australia and um, I actually saw that picture so I have seen a picture like it and I want it and I loved it and I wanted to recreate it which isn't that we get out most of our ideas and things like that I'm not don't necessarily do well Absolutely. with it but yeah i saw some mm. something similar and i'd love to know the person who who did the original so i can thank them for me having that inspiration it's something that popped up years ago i think it might have even just been in my training when i was training for photography because i'd only got my diploma the year before that um in 2013 so um 
yeah, I saw this idea. So anyway, going back to Blackpoint, we were staying in this beautiful shack. My husband, he um, did some work on there. So we would go and stay as a little holiday, as a little holiday place. And they had a guitar. And I was like, oh, my God. And they have sunrise over the sea, whereas where we are in Adelaide, it's sunset over the sea. So I was like, I'm going to try that image. I'm going to do it. So I went out and it was freezing. And I had my big wide, my camera with the wide lens. And I was just laying on the beach waiting for the sun to come up with this guitar and the you know as you can see the um the, the what is it the head of the guitar the that yeah going out to the directing at the sun and uh, yeah I took about a thousand shots of while well, the sun was coming up and um yeah that was um one of them <laughs> but it and, is and uh, your father plays a role in this because yeah, this he, is in Oxford so he so he saw that picture and he said have you got any sort of uh, landscape photos and I said oh, I've always been pretty proud of this one he's like oh my god that's amazing let's let's print that up and put it in Oxford and then I give yeah. him the image ages ago and was wondering if it would it was ever going to show it and then as a surprise I went down then we went for a walk around Oxford and then uh, with him and his lovely wife Sam and and um, we were walking around and then they said oh what's that over there and I was like oh my god there was my print in one of the busiest streets in Oxford so that was really a nice surprise so um, yeah so he prints um, pictures and um, he actually used to be a photographer as well so the story of my dad he is my real dad um, and um, but him and my mum um, actually split up when I was two that's a bit of a secret though to my granddad god love him my granddad means well but um, going back to when I my mum was pregnant my granddad said I think to my dad along the lines of you either marry her or you have nothing to do with her um you know pick one basically and wow. um it was a horrendous time I think I know from my mum my mum's story was she actually did take an overdose when she was pregnant with me um so um fortunately it didn't work out <laughs> I'm here to tell the tale yeah. Um, so that's quite sad. And I think because, um, again, it's a very old fashioned um, setup where, um, yeah, my nan and Pat probably didn't deal with the situation very well. And um, and I know my nan apparently took my mum to the doctors to get an abortion. And the doctor said, I don't think Wendy's um, wanting to go ahead with that. So, you know, they didn't. And then I guess my mum felt pretty shit and did that at the time but it didn't happen. So it didn't, it wasn't successful, let's say. So, um, so yeah. And I, and from my mum's um, story, she carried on seeing my dad secretly for a couple of years. I had to actually call my dad a different name for a couple of years. And then they, um, and then it just fizzled out. And, um, and my mum, I remember was saying, I just wasn't that into him. <laughs> then I think my dad said the same. She just, you know, it just fizzled out. And yeah. I got the impression that she just was, not interested anymore and and then days you didn't have mobile phones or anything like that and you just go to the pub and hope they'd mm. be there and they're just not there or you'd knock on their door and they just wouldn't answer and that was it it was just that's the end of it I guess um so yeah the good, old, was, day, the good old day yeah so I um so then I didn't I didn't actually know my dad at all there was photos and then when I was 15 Oh, it was going through a bit of a rebellious um, stage in life, which I thought was completely normal. I was a 15 year old um, thinking that I was in an 18 year old body, that I was able to go out clubbing. And um, my sister, who I will keep referring back to, because she's a big part of my life, Jodie, she's two years older than me. So I felt that I was her age. So she's 17 and we'd go out clubbing and um and I was a bit of a, yeah, I would go raving as well, partying all weekend, but then still go to school in the week. And um, at the time, there was a lady that was looking after me, Sheila, um, and um, she um, felt that it was time that I get in touch with my real dad. So she got in touch with him and um, I met up with him in Milton Keynes. I hadn't ever set eyes on him. I don't know him at all or I've seen some photos of him and my mum when they were when I was when I was before I was born actually and um, so yeah I met up with him when I was 15 and um, that was weird and he said then he was a graphic designer and um, but what he told me at the time was his partner didn't know that um, he was meeting up with me and I remember thinking, I don't want to be your dirty little secret or <laughs> something. So I, he did actually introduce me to his family, to his mum, and she's adorable. She's lovely, Janet, who I'm, you know, I see now. 
and um, and his sisters they're really lovely but again I think I just had better things to do then at 15 you know I was going out and stuff and um yeah so he um so I just didn't really feel the connection plus my granddad who is my mum's dad my pap um I've always been really close with him and he's always been the father figure of my life and I'm forever grateful for having him there um, so I just didn't really feel like I needed a father figure. At this point, I mentioned my mum sort of went off the rails a bit. Well, I guess we'll get to that. Um, yeah, so I guess Sheila, who was like a mum to me, um, who I was living with at the time, um, she um, she just felt that Sarah needs a, a parent, a responsible parent. And probably I probably wasn't listening to Sheila's advice. Um, and um, yeah, so that didn't really, nothing really come of that at that time. So from the age of two? Sorry, from the age of two to 15, you didn't see your dad at all then? No, no, not at all. Not from what I know, anyway. No, I'm pretty sure I didn't From see 15 it. onwards, was he your dad? Or no. So dad? Um, he did okay. keep ringing, and, um, and then in the end, he, he wanted to meet up, but I just, yeah, I, and it wasn't even that I really did feel, I didn't feel that I had a connection or anything. And it was, it was nice to see him and it was nice to see his family. But I guess at the time, um, I think, and I realised this at 15, 15 is a, excuse my name, it's a bloody horrible age, you know, for boys and girls, it's you true. know, you're, you're um, finding your way. And my mum had left, my mum was, um, I guess we'll get to that, but she was sort of doing a bit of traveling and um, and she disappeared. And um, yeah, I was just trying to enjoy life. I hadn't, you know, mental health wasn't a thing to me and I was fine mm. as far as I was concerned. The only thing I didn't want to do much of was schoolwork, you know, but I had to. And um, yeah, and just um, just growing up really and enjoying life. And um, yeah, so, so I, I met him, I met his family, that was lovely, but I didn't feel that I needed to continue that relationship at the time. So um, mm. I think he did keep ringing and eventually Sheila, who was like a mum to me, who I was living with at the time, sort of said, I don't think she's ready and maybe just leave the ball in her court for her to contact you when she's ready. So yeah, I didn't have any contact with him then for years. You just mentioned you were living with Sheila, your grand grandmother. No, no, no. Um, Sheila's like a was like a mum to me. She's not my grandma. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, on the Why story. Why are you living yeah. with Sheila then? Okay, so Sheila is a beautiful, beautiful lady. She actually only passed away in June last year. Oh my God, it's coming up. Sorry, it's coming up to a week since she passed. I'll say that again. It's coming up to a week um, since she passed, and I think she's um, sorry. So um, I bought tissues. She, um, yeah. So Sheila, we met her years ago, I think I was about 10. And my mum, um, this is why I just believe in spiritual things as well. I'll go back to, um, so my mum, my mum always worked full time. She's a bloody hard worker. And um, not, it wasn't enough that she worked as a count, as a cook for the county council in Northampton. She also wanted a little cleaning job on the side. And I remember saying to me, mum, uh, Sarah, there's, a, there's a, a, an advert in the shop window and this shop is on Adelaide Street. <laughs> I only just realised this a couple of years ago. The shop is on in Adelaide Street, This um, the corner shop. And she said, go and get the number. It's asking for a cleaner. So I got the number. Mum rang them up and she got the job. And this Sheila was actually the lady who was asking for a cleaner. She's a teacher. She's got a beautiful Victorian five-storey house, um, not far from where we were living. So mum got the job to be her cleaner. Sheila's a teacher. She teach. She taught at Bosworth Tutorial College, uh, which is a private college um, on, if you're local, on George's Avenue in Northampton. Um, it's mostly for um, international students. A lot of Asian students go there. Um, students. The year that I went there, we'll get onto that. Um, the uh, president of Zambia's daughter was there, Hortensia Chaluba. Am I allowed to name drop? I don't know if I should do that, but <laughs> I don't think it was a big secret or anything. But um, but yeah, so it was a quite a um, a good college to go to. And um, anyway, so at this time, going back to when I was nine or ten, I can't remember. Um, my mum got the job to clean for Sheila and um, and then they just became very close, friendly and close. And at that, and then I think when I was 13, yeah, I don't think I know when I was 13, my nan, my mum's mum, got cancer and that was devastating to our family, especially to me. Um, I was very close to my nan 
um, from the age of, from the baby, when I was born, although my nan took my mum to get an abortion because at the time they felt that was the right thing to do, uh, when I was born, I was very much a wanted baby, especially by my grandparents. They were I was very, very spoiled. So there's no, you know, hardships there or anything like that. I was at my grandparents every single weekend. Mm. Can I ask you a question there, though? Yeah. I, I think even though you just mentioned that about being, it, it, it's, it, you felt wanted and so on. I do think there's psychological factors to this point, though, and I could be wrong. So, and it, this is why. So that's why I want to ask: When did what? How old were you when you found out you were meant to be aborted, but wasn't? I think I was thirteen. I do remember having the conversation with my mum, and I don't know why she told me, or but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was at thirteen. So maybe it could have been just after my mum, my nan died. How did that make you feel when you found that out from your mum? I don't know. I don't, I guess, um, I think I felt bad for my mum, you know, I don't know if that was her intention for, you know, for me to feel sorry for her or I think she's always, she, my mum's always been about honesty and, um, I'm the same. Um, you know, mm. honesty is the best policy. The truth will always come out. And, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I it's weird because at the time I, I think I've just always as a child took everything in its stride and I don't think I've ever, but it's good because once I was born, my, my grandparents just took over. They were really happy, you know, and, and then this spiritualist lady, Pina, her name is in Adelaide. She's amazing. She said, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on a minute. Let's go back, go back mm -hmm. to, so you thought you've been told that, you know, you wasn't, you know, in a, in a sense, wasn't meant to be here. Well, maybe wasn't wanted. Mm -hmm. And then, and then she said, um, and it really did open up, I guess, a wound um, that I didn't realise that I had. Um, she said, um, you do realise that you've probably spent your whole entire life up to now proving to people that you deserve to be here. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.